The root microbiome is the dynamic community of microorganisms associated with plant roots. Because they are rich in a variety of carbon compounds, plant roots provide unique environments for a diverse assemblage of soil microorganisms, including bacteria, fungi and archaea. The microbial communities inside the root and in the rhizosphere are distinct from each other, and from the microbial communities of bulk soil, although there is some overlap in species composition. Root microbiota affect plant host fitness and productivity in a variety of ways. Members of the root microbiome benefit from plant sugars or other carbon-rich molecules. Individual members of the root microbiome may behave differently in association with different plant hosts, or may change the nature of their interaction along the mutualist parasite continuum within a single host as environmental conditions or host health change. Despite the potential importance of the root microbiome for plants and ecosystems, our understanding of how root microbial communities are assembled is in its infancy. This is in part because until recent advances in sequencing technologies, root microbes were difficult to study due to high species diversity, the large number of cryptic species, and the fact that most species have yet to be retrieved in culture. Evidence suggests both biotic such as host identity and plant neighbor and abiotic such as soil structure and nutrient availability factors affect community composition. Topic: Function. Topic: Types of symbioses. Root-associated microbes include fungi, bacteria, and archaea living within or on the surface of roots, as well as in the rhizosphere. Symbionts associated with plant roots subsist off of photosynthetic products carbon-rich molecules from the plant host and can exist anywhere on the mutualist, parasite continuum. Root symbionts may improve their host's access to nutrients, produce plant growth regulators, improve environmental stress tolerance of their host, induce host defenses and systemic resistance against pests or pathogens, or be pathogenic. Parasites consume carbon from the plant without providing any benefit, or providing too little benefit relative to what they cost in carbon, thereby compromising host fitness. Symbionts may be biotrophic subsisting off of living tissue or necrotrophic subsisting off of dead tissue. Topic: <laughs> Mutualist parasite continuum. While some microbes may be purely mutualistic or parasitic, many may behave one way or the other depending on the host species with which it is associated, environmental conditions, and host health. A host's immune response controls symbiont infection and growth rates. If a host's immune response is not able to control a particular microbial species, or if host immunity is compromised, the microbe-plant relationship will likely reside somewhere near the parasitic side of the mutualist parasite continuum. Similarly, high nutrients can push some microbes into parasitic behavior, encouraging unchecked growth at a time when symbionts are no longer needed to aid with nutrient acquisition. Topic. Composition Roots are colonized by fungi, bacteria and archaea. Because they are multicellular, fungi can extend hyphae from nutrient exchange organs within host cells into the surrounding rhizosphere and bulk soil. Fungi that extend beyond the root surface and engage in nutrient carbon exchange with the plant host are commonly considered to be mycorrhizal, but external hyphae can also include other endophytic fungi. 
Mycorrhizal fungi can extend a great distance into bulk soil, thereby increasing the root system's reach and surface area, enabling mycorrhizal fungi to acquire a large percentage of its host plant's nutrients. In some ecosystems, up to 80% of plant nitrogen and 90% of plant phosphorus is acquired by mycorrhizal fungi. In return, plants may allocate approximately 20-40% of their carbon to mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae Mycorrhizae include a broad variety of root-fungi interactions characterized by mode of colonization. Essentially all plants form mycorrhizal associations, and there is evidence that some mycorrhizae transport carbon and other nutrients not just from soil to plant, but also between different plants in a landscape. The main groups include ectomycorrhizae, arbuscular mycorrhizae, ericoid mycorrhizae, orchid mycorrhizae, and monotropoid mycorrhizae. Monotropoid mycorrhizae are associated with plants in the monotropaceae, which lack chlorophyll. Many orchids are also a chlorophyllous for at least part of their life cycle. Thus these mycorrhizal plant relationships are unique because the fungus provides the host with carbon as well as other nutrients, often by parasitizing other plants. A chlorophyllous plants forming these types of mycorrhizal associations are called mycoheterotrophs. Topic: <inaudible> Endophytes. Endophytes are bacteria or fungi that live within plant tissue. They may colonize intercellular spaces, the root cells themselves, or both. Rhizobia and dark septate endophytes which produce melanin, an antioxidant that may provide resilience against a variety of environmental stresses are famous examples. <laughs> Archaea Archaea are traditionally thought of as microbes belonging to extreme environments. Though they are found in plant roots, little is known about their effect on plant health or their role in the root microbiome. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Assembly mechanisms. There is an ongoing debate regarding what mechanisms are responsible for assembling individual microbes into communities. There are two primary competing hypotheses. One is that everything is everywhere, but the environment selects, meaning biotic and abiotic factors pose the only constraints, through natural selection, to which microbes colonize what environments. This is called the niche hypothesis, and its counterpart is the hypothesis that neutral processes, such as distance and geographic barriers to dispersal, control microbial community assembly when taxa are equally fit within an environment. In this hypothesis, differences between individual taxa in modes and reach of dispersal explain the differences in microbial communities of different environments. Most likely, both natural selection and neutral processes affect microbial community assembly, though certain microbial taxa may be more restricted by one process or the other depending on their physiological restrictions and mode of dispersion. Microbial dispersal mechanisms include wind, water, and hitchhiking on more mobile macrobes. Microbial dispersion is difficult to study, and little is known about its effect on microbial community assembly relative to the effect of abiotic and biotic assembly mechanisms, particularly in roots. For this reason only assembly mechanisms that fit within the niche hypothesis are discussed below. 
The taxa within root microbial communities seem to be drawn from the surrounding soil, though the relative abundance of various taxa may differ greatly from those found in bulk soil due to unique niches in the root and rhizosphere. Biotic assembly mechanisms Different parts of the root are associated with different microbial communities. For example, fine roots, root tips, and the main root are all associated with different communities, and the rhizosphere, root surface, and root tissue are all associated with different communities, likely due to the unique chemistry and nutrient status of each of these regions. Additionally different plant species, and even different cultivars, harbor different microbial communities, probably due to host-specific immune responses and differences in carbon root exudates. Host age affects root microbial community composition, likely for similar reasons as host identity. The identity of neighboring vegetation has also been shown to impact a host plant's root microbial community composition. <laughs> Abiotic assembly mechanisms Abiotic mechanisms also affect root microbial community assembly because individual taxa have different optima along various environmental gradients, such as nutrient concentrations, pH, moisture, temperature, etc. In addition to chemical and climatic factors, soil structure and disturbance impact root biotic assembly. Topic. Succession The root microbiome is dynamic, fluid within the constraints imposed by the biotic and abiotic environment. As in macroecological systems, the historical trajectory of the microbiotic community may partially determine the present and future community. Due to antagonistic and mutualistic interactions between microbial taxa, the taxa colonizing a root at any given moment could be expected to influence which new taxa are acquired, and therefore how the community responds to changes in the host or environment. While the effect of initial community on microbial succession has been studied in various environmental samples, human microbiome, and laboratory settings, it has yet to be studied in roots. <laughs> 